Hello and welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Omar Sanzo, and joining me today is Silverquill. You stay on your half of the review ch- channel, I'll stay on my half. Oh, so, so you're putting tapes on, eh? So that's how it is, That's eh? right. <laughs> tapes nothing, I'm putting landmines down. So oh, we're, we're in the demilitarized cha- zone. So we're, this isn't even our channel. <laughs> And yet, I'm staking a claim. Also joining us is Jacob. Hello, everybody. I hope we're doing well and you don't have any problems with siblings. Siblings? What's that? <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Mm-hmm. So, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review um, My Little Pony Tell Your Tale, uh, Nightmare Roommate. Uh, in this episode, Easy Moonbow is bugging all her friends because of her random actions. Yes. So, technically, there's no summary on, sorry, there's no short summary on the wiki for this one, so I'm just winging it. But, anywho, first impressions are in order. And, Silver, what do you think? Uh, this one didn't fly for me as much because it's trying too hard to make Izzy Pinkie Pie 2.0. And from the movie, I I was very pleased that Izzy was her own character. But this one, it doesn't do, it's just not kicking for me. (laughs) There's some nice slapstick humor, but that's uh, about it. All right, all right. And Jacob, what about you, my friend? Uh, well, I do have some things to say, but I'd rather just save it for the review. Uh, sort of a mix mix on this one. Alrighty then. And as for me, this one was just an okay. It, it, it felt more annoying because slapstick humor, um, Izzy being the instigator and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. So anywho, um, if you have not watched this episode, go do so now. Welcome back. So, as before, we're going to try and do things a bit different here. So, we're going to go via characters. And first up is the mayor of the hour, Izzy. What do you guys think of her? Like, personally for me, Izzy is the Pinkie Pie of the group, but has her own shtick. She's weird in her own random way, but not too pinkyish. Also, she has this innocence where... She's discovering the world for the first time. A fish out of water kind of deal. But in this one, it just makes her feel like, why are you like this? Why are you taking stuff without asking permission for permission and whatnot? And why are you doing the things that you're doing? And later on, we we find out why. But still, like the journey there is just, oh God. Silver, what do you have to say about Izzy? Well, I Izzy was my favorite character of the movie. It's funny, my favorite character slot has alternated a great deal throughout this generation. Mm. Uh, so in the movie, I know it's tempting to try and classify each character as a successor to the main six. Missy is the new Fluttershy. He's just the new Applejack. Uh, Pip is supposedly the new Rarity. But I, I try to avoid doing that because I want these characters to be, well, their own characters. But it's hard when I get the sense that they're really, with, especially with Izzy, they're trying to mimic Pinkie Pie's enthusiasm and spontaneity, but they're also flanderizing. As you say, in this, uh, in this case, having no sense of social boundaries or, or private property. And so I feel like they're doing uh, Izzy a disservice in this episode. Yeah, I totally... it's one thing. Sorry, go ahead. It's one thing when Izzy's magic is just acting up when she's asleep. But when she's taking everyone else's stuff, all because she quote unquote admires them, it's like, no, you're making her stupid. Yeah. And Izzy is not stupid. That is true. She's creative in her way of thinking and what she does. But the what, what she's doing in this one is like 
not her. And like you mentioned earlier on before, Silver, about each character being their own thing. I agree with that statement there. And at the same time too, I feel like they're trying they're they're trying just to kind of fit each character into the previous generation's mold, which is a bad thing to do. And Easy is a bad example of them doing that in this episode. Mm. Mm. And Jacob, what about you? Well, that sorry, yeah. anything more to add, Silver? Nope, nope, that's it for me. All right. Um, Jacob, what about you? Well, uh, where to begin? I think uh, we need to go back to the movie because uh, the entirety of Izzy's arc is based on the fact that she left her home because she never had any friends in her life because, well, you've seen how... what unicorns were like in uh, Bridalwood. Like, doll drums, is that the expression? Yep, down in the doldrums. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, well, she she left her home and went went to Maritime Bay because she found Sunny's message. And this is what basically kick-started the plot of the movie. Uh, so, considering uh, all of the other uh, episodes we've seen so far, which, I, okay, it's not many, but the series showed her... Th- to this point that, well, especially in this one, it's really later, combined with everything else that we know before is that the lack uh, in tact and the lack of tact and understanding of what personal space is comes of her never interacting with anyone that she could call friends because even those have set boundaries. So I guess you could uh, chalk it up to the fact that well, I guess she doesn't know what uh, the Tibetan friends uh, have limits to what others can do with their own stuff. Mm, yeah, if if you don't have friends, I, I guess I can see why she did that. But to be honest, right when when I first saw this episode, I thought, oh, is the gang trying to solve EZ's random magic power using while she's sleeping? So this is gonna be one of those fun episodes where we get to see how they deal with Izzy's magic um, usage in her sleep. Like, magic casting while sleeping. Huh? That's gonna be fun. But in reality, it's just a Nightmare Roommate episode, which is kind of disappointing. The previous idea well, I had was fun. Should be fun. And should be explored. Well, uh, I think the whole uh, using magic while sleeping is basically tied to well, the whole thing that she was, what she was doing, then she was exhausted because of it. I guess you could say she was moon casting <laughs> or sleep casting. Sleep casting, probably. But yeah, I, I, I understand. But at the same time, too, like the if the whole episode was dedicated to that, that sorry, um, to that, that would have been a much interesting story to run with. But nah, so. Moving on after Easy, um, her well, friend. Not sorry. yet. Well, uh, still got something to say. So yeah, maybe they could have not uh, put it, uh, made it uh, so hard that she's like completely reckless in this one. But even so, it basically shows that uh, how how sad uh, Easy's existence was and. It, Okay, it's not really a spoiler, but further down the line, it shows where she's basically making um, replicas of living uh, beings out of inanimate objects, so she could have company. So yeah, I guess I know this. This may be not be the right uh, episode, but I think uh, I sort uh, you sort of start to feel sorry for Izzy because well. She's only now experiencing what friendship is really like, and considering she never had a many before where she left. You know, uh, it I, would I... have been real. Un- it would have been real unfortunate if somebody decided to make a story where where it was revealed that Izzy did have a friend back home, but she chose to abandon her to be with her quote unquote first real friends. 
<coughs> too frank. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I see, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but at the same time too, I, I I get you. But at the same time, it's like I I wish, but you know what? Wishing doesn't do crap. Anywho, moving on to the rest of the friends. Like, I I, I can't think of them specifically because they're all a unit in this episode. So, just looking at them, like, they they are tired because Easy snores into sleep. That's something you get, uh, that you need to deal with if you have roommates in real life too. So, you have them not getting enough sleep. Then discovering that Easy is borrowing all of their stuff without even asking for permission. So, this is one of those aspects where, okay, we we need to do something and how do we even do it and the way that they do it is just ask hitch okay yeah so silver what what, what do you think of the three mares here well they don't get to have a lot of individual identities and uh as a result i i guess it's tr- it's hard to get them to stand out. They'll have their own episodes to distinguish, so I'm not too worried about it. But really, Hitch is the big surprise in this one. Running his, uh, sh- well, sheriff's office slash prison like a hotel. <laughs> Ironically, to the guy who's going to become a magician for the group. Hmm. So he makes a I mean, comeback? same character. Oh, yeah, he's in several episodes. Oh, all right. So that's one sorry. one thing I like about Tell Your Tale. It has a greater supporting cast. That's probably because the animation is cheaper, and that's a positive. I mean, you you reuse characters, so um, they're at least they're not reusing. Um, they're, they're not cloning assets, but they're reusing assets that are there and just winging it. So th- that's good. That's good. So well, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, it's surprising that Hitch was the one that kind of teach the others a lesson about how to deal with roommates. And funny enough, it's the prisoner that's the roommate for Hitch. So there, there is a bit of hostility, but with the right words and actions, um, you can mingle well with your prisoner. Makes me think that that magician is going to have Stockholm Syndrome. Hitch, darling, I picked out drapes. <laughs> okay, so be careful not to be too kind because, well, let's just say that tongues are gonna wang, oh, no. and then somebody's gonna commit crime on purpose. <laughs> oh no, I've been a bad pony. Would you put me to jail, Mr. Hitch? <laughs> I've already brought my own hoof cuffs. <laughs> They're pink with fur. Oh, God. <laughs> but Jacob, what about you? What do you think about the friends? Yeah, I really don't know what was there much to say about this one. Like, it's just one entity at this point because they both, they all have problem, the same problem. Like, he's just taking their stuff without permission. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I, I understand. Okay, what about Hitch? Uh, Hitch is the guy that kind of solves the problem. So, what do you think of his solution? Uh, it's good, but I don't know. I I don't know the whole thing about uh, treat, uh, treating uh, your prisoners, prisoners like a guest. Uh, that I don't know. It just doesn't feel well with me, even if it is sort of like a gag. Like, what did the, this guy even do wrong? Jaywalk, probably. <laughs> Didn't pick up his litter, probably. Might as well be put, Actually, in, the, he... might as well be put in the corner for five minutes. <laughs> yes, Silver? What, what, Actually, what I, could see, I could see him, a failed magician stunt. He made a cart disappear and never brought it back. <gasps> he stole the cart! How dare he! Well, I mean, if they put the cart before the horse. <laughs> oh, boys. All righty then. So let's let's talk about the quote-unquote um, reason and uh, resolution. And the reason is 
Izzy is trying hard to emulate her friends doing what they're doing because she admires them all and just trying to yeah just trying to be her friends and this is not trying to pl- play with them or just hang out with them this is just being them like uh easy sees zip style her hair with um hair products and try to do it um pip does her live stream or wears her crown and whatnot and she sorry more more to play her with her phone and easy does that too play with her phone in her crown and with sunny just borrows her toothbrush as an ear cleaner god Ugh. yeah so well, I mean, you can at least make an excuse that she didn't know that that was for cleaning people considering the uh, unicorns didn't have technology but at the same time too if she's emulating her friends like she would have seen what Sunny was doing with that thing so at least she has a general idea but I'm not gonna question it but in the end she learned her lesson and says that oh I'm just doing this because I want to be like you guys but since I don't I can be myself yay and goes to sleep saying that she's tired because uh, coping you guys are hard work and Silver what do you think like is it good enough? Well, I mean, it's it's ultimately inoffensive, other than you know, using someone's toothbrush to clean your ears. Blech. But uh, it doesn't make Izzy look too bad. It's just mm, maybe making her a little too dumb to fit the story. This is the whole Applejack problem again, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, when they when they throttle down the intelligence of a character to make them fit, the the story should flow from the characters. The characters should not yield to the story. That is true. And like I mentioned before, if they use the idea that I say, like problem with the magic while sleeping, try to solve that problem. That would be fun. Maybe, maybe there, there could be a montage of them trying to do silly things, and in the end, it's just. Easy being tired trying to keep up with her friends and a good night's rest will solve that problem. That that could have been a solution. Yeah. And Jacob, what about you? Uh, I don't think there's anything else to say. Uh, I honestly don't know what to say anymore at this point. <laughs> Alright, yeah, no problem, no problem. So let's go to final thoughts then. So as for me, it's a very entertaining episode. It it has its charms in certain spots. And I'm guessing going forward, we'll probably see Easy trying to be more of herself and kind of be the super glue that keeps the friendship going on. And we'll probably see what each character's gimmick is. But for this one, I, I don't see it at all. Like, it, it just shows me that Easy is the bumbling buffoon that just starts trouble and makes things worse. And Hitch is just the problem solver. He has the right answer for every situation. That's what I see. And Silver, what about you for final thoughts? Well, I think it's good when characters can learn from one another. I don't mind that Hitch provides a perspective. I mean, he'll have his own problems as a dragon dad in short order. Oh, no. But, yeah, yeah, we'll have to cross that bridge at some point. Mm -hmm. But, uh, how best to put it? It's more that this is an engineered problem by making a character less competent, where at instead of letting clashing clashing personalities interact. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, I I can see what you mean. The the clashing personality would have been much better because at least you got, at, at least they could have solved their problem in an impeccable way where, hey, we, we don't have to be um, we don't have to 
think the same, but at least we find a solution. So, yeah. There we go. Yep, yep. And Jacob, what about you for final thoughts? Yeah, I think this is the... Uh, yeah, it's not exactly the best episode, but at least it so, uh, sort of shows the well, the root of the whole problem with Izzy, with her being socially awkward, or well, doesn't understand social cues because of uh, the circumstances of where she lived. Although I suppose like, the it could have been less uh, aggressive with the well, as you mentioned, Norman. Uh, toothbrush here cleaner mm, yeah yeah that, mm -hmm, mm. but this is uh, just like you know uh, I'm trying to find what's the the right way to explain it's sort of like uh, showing the villain's the villain's backstory it's there to to explain uh what it what it brought him to this point and not to excuse it mm. is that the way is I, that the way I, I i get it i get it um this is the backstory for the villain and whatnot and this is the reason not the excuse yeah mm. all right so yeah i think that's that's about it all right all right understandable understandable and yeah, um, I hope you guys at home enjoyed the quick review that we have here. And probably next episode will be much more entertaining or much more better. Like, yeah, I feel like Tell Your Tale will be awesome. It's just that certain episodes is just going to be tiring. Yep. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? On Twitter, YouTube, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Also, you can find me on YouTube by doing a search for After the Fact Silver Quill. Uh, you can also search for my Weekday Puns channel. If you need a daily dose of punishment. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, something like that on a weekly, daily basis? Uh, every weekday. So Monday through Friday. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, on a week weekday basis. Mm. Oh, God. So so basically, you're giving people breaks on Saturday, Sunday, eh? Exactly. Uh, how, how benevolent of you, Silver? It, even punsters must rest. I see. All right, all right, all right. And Jacob, where can the good people find you? <laughs> uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafontorka, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. Uh, filmfiction and if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the Tales of the Ashes .com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Zizir Vakwil. I'm Yakup. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs>